in this video I'm going to show you how to do the lock stock and two smoking barrels intro. But before we start, my name is Rico Richardson. I upload weekly videos on the Vinci and Dark Table. So if that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing. Now let me show you how to do this. Alright, and we're in DaVinci Resolve, and I've got a couple of things. And one thing I want to mention is this background that you see right here, I've made this in GIMP. So if you want to create this, just download it, create something similar. I've got some stock clips, so I've got this Fusion clip, it's a PNG file, or actually this one. I've downloaded that one from Pexels, same goes for this video file, I'll put links in the description down below. Now, this is built out of a couple of bricks, let's call them bricks. So we've got a text brick, which is this one, and if you want to see it for yourself, which layer is what, because right now you can't, all you gotta do is press the symbol, and then you will be able to see which is what. So we've got a text block, then we've got the fusion clip, which is this lady with the thing around her. Then we've got this PNG one. We've got the background one. And then we've got the original source file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new timeline for you. And in this timeline, I'm going to drag this clip. There you go. I'm going to shorten it. And now we're going to work with uh, this. Now let's find the spot where she points her finger, which is right over here. I'm going to make a cut. By using the blade tool, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to move forward one frame and I'm going to create another cut. And we need this. So let's drag this one out and click your right mouse button and go to change clip speed. And let's freeze the frame. There you go. So now the frame has been frozen and it won't do anything else. So let's just drag this out for a couple of seconds. And in this case, I decided to create six seconds of a freeze frame. Now let me show you how this looks. So I'm going to play back the clip. So now we're freezing the frame. It's still frozen, but we need this time for all the effects. And now it's going back. So the first step has been done. Let's select this clip. Let's hit Alt. Let's duplicate it. Now we've got two layers of this clip. And that's what we need to work with. The first thing is going to the color page. And this is going to be an enormous time-consuming thing. I'm going to get rid of the timeline. There you go. Because we need to mask her in the table out. Now, go to this button right here, which is the window button. Click on the pen tool, and we are going to zoom in. And let's start drawing. And I think you will get the point, because we need to draw all around her throughout the entire image. I'm going to speed up the process. And then when you're at the end, just click the first one to lock it down. And now you see that we've got a mask. There's one more thing, right mouse button, add alpha output, drag this line towards there. And that's all you got to do for here. Because this means that we've created a mask around her. Now let's go back to the edit tab and you won't see a difference. And the simple reason for that is because we have the same background here. If I deselect it, then the mask is starting to appear. So let's activate it back. Now what we're going to do is right mouse button, new fusion clip. And we're going to edit this in Fusion. And in the Fusion tab, we have a media in and we have a media out. And the media out is being shown here and the media in will be shown there. So there's two things I want to add. The first one, make sure you select the media in. The first one is a background node. And now we need to change the background node. So let's select the background and let's click on this little symbol right here, which is the polygon. That will make sure that we're going to create a mask. Now guess what we need to do? We need to do the same thing we did a minute ago, which is draw the mask again. So I'm going to fast forward that again, and I'll see you in a minute. And once you've done that, this is the result that you'll get. We want to change that, so let's just click solid so that it's deselected or unchecked. And now let's change the border width. The higher we go, the bigger the border goes. So in this case, I want to advise you all to just go, go to 0 0.006. It's a very thin and small line, but you'll definitely see it. So let's click on the background node and you see that right now we have a black line around our character. I don't want it to be black. So let's just click the color one and let's select red. And let's click OK. And now we've got a red outline around our character. And for this fusion clip, there's only one more thing that we need to do. Because I want to animate how this goes around her. So let's click on the polygon one. And let's go to frame number 
25. So it takes a second for the entire line to go around her. And we can adjust that by selecting the length one to change that one. So right now we're on frame 25. So let's click here to create a keyframe. Now let's pull it back into frame number zero. And let's pull this back as well. And now we've got a keyframe on frame zero and on frame 25. Now let me show you how that looks by going to the background. So right now we don't see anything on the first frame or frame zero. And if we play it back, you see that the line is starting to appear. Right. So let's go back to the edit page and let's drag our fusion clip up two tracks. So right now it's here because we need to place a background behind it and we need to place our fire behind it. So let's drag and drop the background onto the timeline. So make sure it's on here. And then I'm going to shorten it down. So right now we have the background so we don't see the one she was in anymore. And I want to animate this as well. Now remember the line takes one second to go over the character. And I want to do the same thing for the background. So let's go to the start of the background. And let's go to cropping and let's crop it out just entirely. And I'm going to create a keyframe. Now let's go forward one second and let's drag this backwards again so it's set to zero so it automatically creates a keyframe and now the background is animated as well because here you have a preview. Right, so just for the sake of this tutorial I want to see what I'm doing so I'm going to make sure that everything is visible. I'm going to drag this photo on top of here as well and I want to get rid of the blacks. This wasn't a PNG, so I'm going to key this out. And I couldn't create that somehow in the edit tab, so we're going back to the fusion tab, and I'm going to make sure that the black is gone. So right mouse button, new fusion clip. I'm going to deactivate the top one, because we don't need that one, and I want to make sure that we only edit this one. So let's go to the fusion tab, and we have a media out again, and a media in, and we're going to hit the shift space bar, and we're going to find the Luma keyer, Double click it, let's add it. So now the Luma key has been added and you see that the black is now gone. Let's change the filter from fast Gaussian to box because if we don't, we will still see some blacks. And I want to make sure that the contrast is a little bit stronger. There you go. And that's all we need to do right here. So let's go back to the edit tab and you see that now we have our fiery image. And if I bring back the lady, you see that this is what we have right now. So about this background one, let's just change the position. So I'm just going to make sure that it's somewhere around here because we're going to place some text over it. So now you need to make sure that you're on titles in the effects library. So if you don't have it, just click here. And then let's use this one. You've got two. This is the ordinary one, which you can't change a lot in. And this is the fusion text one. So I'm going to drag that one on top of everything. And because this looks like a very powerful woman who is the boss and who is in charge and everything on Netflix is in Spanish right now, we are going to call her La Hefa. So if you want to just change the font into whatever you like, and for this tutorial, I really liked the ink free effect because it looks like it's been written out. I'm going to make sure that I change the size a little bit. There you go. And I want to angle this or pitch it or yaw it. So let's go to settings. And here you have the yaw option. So let's just yaw it a little bit. And I'm going to change the position again. This is the exact same reason why I said we need to change how the fire looks as well. So let's change that position a little bit. That looks good enough for this tutorial. If you want to, you can customize this. So right now it's, it's very hard to read it. And the great thing about this text effect is that we can go back to title and then scroll back up and we've got some options. And in this case, you've got transform and shading and we're going to use the shading one. The first one, that's the text element. And if we go to number two, which is the red outline and we enable it, we see that we now have a red outline and that reads a lot better. And that's the basis of this effect. So let's finish this one up. To finish this, you can add an explosion sound for this fire to appear. And I want to make sure that this becomes bigger. Let's do that one first. Let's go to the first frame of everything. And to know what we're working with, we can change the name by just clicking here and then changing the name. And another thing that you can do is just click this box and that will show you which is what. So we've got the text effect over here. We've got the woman over here. We've got the fire over here. Then we've got the background, which we don't see right now because it's been animated. And then we've got our original file. So in this case, 
I want to make sure that this blows up a little bit and I want her to become bigger in eight frames. So let's just go to zoom, create a keyframe here, the original file. Let's click a keyframe on her as well. I want to create a keyframe for the fire because I want it to appear after eight seconds. So we're going to bring that to zero, create a keyframe for that as well. For the text effect, and this is why we're going to use this one, I want to make sure that we can write it on. There's a line for that over here, write on, which is basically a way to have this appear on screen while it's animated. I'm going to drag this one down. Now the text is gone and I'm going to create a keyframe. Now let's go forward eight frames and let's have the text appear. So I'm going to drag this one. Let's make sure that this is set to one. Well, what I like is 1.25. And you see something went wrong, but don't worry. We'll fix that in a minute. I want the fire to appear. So I'm going to bring this to one. The background is still being animated. And we've got the original file, which needs to be 1.25 as well. And now everything is being animated. And I want to do the same thing on the opposite side. Let's go to the end of this one, go back eight frames and just click the keyframes. So the right on one. And then in this case, I want to click the transform one for the fire as well, the zoom one. And then for the background, I'm going to make sure that we've got a keyframe on the crop right for the original file. We need a keyframe for the zoom one. And then we're going to the end. And we're going to bring this back. So zero, so everything back to default. So the crop right, there you go, because we want to get rid of that one. Then the fire one, I want that to be zero again. Then we've got her, which I want to be one again. You see that the keyframe is automatically being created. And for the text one, I want to make sure that it's been written off again. Now there's one thing, we can keep it like this, but if we go to the 0308 marker and we select the text and we select the fire, both of them, and we just drag them out a little bit. Because if we drag them out, I think that will look better because the background will be shown completely. But that means that we need to make sure that the keyframes we made at the end of this needs to be moved in front of here. So I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to cut it off here as well. I'm going to delete those. I'm just going to repeat the two steps for this one. So go back eight frames, create a keyframe. Same goes here. And in this case, it's for the zoom. And we're going to the end of this one. And I'm going to make sure that this is zero. I'm going to make sure that this is written off. Now let's play everything. I'm going to make sure that I cut this off, the bits. And let me show you how this looks. Pretty awesome if you ask me. So that's how you can create this. Remember, if you want to pimp this one up, you can add some sound effects for the explosion or the fire to happen. I hope this was helpful. I hope you like this effect. It's from the Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels film. It's the first film I saw that used this effect. If you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button down there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, do it.